Good morning. I'm Maria Paz Grisales, a PMR specialist from Colombia and vice chair of the ISPRM Joe Forum. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Michael Nielsen. Dr. Nielsen is director of the Center for Rehab Innovation at the University of Newcastle, Australia. He has extensive experience in translating the latest innovations and research findings into patient care, including the use of artificial intelligence. He has been invited to be a keynote speaker at the next ISPRM Congress in Sydney. Good morning, doctor. How are you today? Um, very well, thank you. And I'm sending greetings from Singapore, actually, where I am at the moment. And it's a uh, time difference. Uh, it's nine o'clock in the, in the evening here now. Sure. From where I'm from, is today is still morning. Yes, <laughs> I can understand. You have been invited to be a keynote speaker at the next conference. What are you most looking forward to during the congress? Oh, as always, it's a it's a fantastic conference, and I looking I look forward to uh, catch up with all colleagues and uh, and uh, take the opportunity to get uh, an update in in the recent areas that I follow and I also am active in and uh, I'm sure that uh, the conference in Sydney will be uh, a great experience. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a great program, fantastic program, but also a wonderful location uh, in Darling Harbour in Sydney. So I, I think there will be uh, a lot of uh, opportunities for meetings, professional interactions, but also social activities. So really looking forward to it. Thank you, Doctor. The title of your lecture is Can Artificial Intelligence Be Used in Rehabilitation Medicine? Could you tell us a little bit about your experience with artificial intelligence? Yes, uh, thank you. Um, the project uh, that, that I will present uh, the outcome from is called the Super Knee uh, Project. And uh, it uh, started uh, four years ago, actually, even before COVID. And um, it... Um, and normally, I am um, more interested in uh, the brain and brain plasticity and reorganization after stroke and, and related rehab programs. Uh, that's been a main focus of mine during my, my career. Uh, however, this is a knee uh, study and um, uh, replacement, uh, total knee arthroplasty and um, where the patients uh, are going uh, for rehabilitation afterwards. At the time of the study inception, it was a controversial uh, issue if the, the patients uh, were going to stay for inpatient rehabilitation or if they were supposed to go home. And um, uh, there was a lot of debate between the care providers and insurers uh, globally but it was particularly intense in Australia around that time and uh, we started to look into uh, the different aspects of the discussion and realized that there were no real um, opportunities to look at the, the patient's biopsychosocial profile uh, and uh, how to adequately stratify the, the patients to the right care and rehabilitation level after the surgery was over. And was o uh, quite often based on local traditions and uh, um, not, not coherent and cohesive uh, um, examination from, from that biopsychosocial perspective. So, what we, we started to set out, out was to collect uh, prospectively uh, a very comprehensive set of biopsychosocial uh, parameters, uh, PROMs, uh, uh, reflecting uh, different <coughs> uh, uh, components that we, were extra that we had extracted from the literature. Um, so committed action, stress, resilience, uh, and other aspects 
we started to collect in, in a cohort of 1,000 patients. And uh, with the goal of creating a tool, a clinical decision support tool that could help us with, uh, with uh, the stratification and uh, allocation of resources to these patients after arthroplasty. And uh, we, we all already early on uh, established uh, a collaboration with computer scientists and AI machine learning specialists that uh, developed an algorithm based on, on this, this data that we collected. And um, um, after the study was finished, we uh, 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 tested uh, the accuracy of the algorithm uh, based on our collected data. And uh, we, we could, in many cases, predict, uh, accurately predict the right uh, outcome after three months after surgery. So my presentation will provide the background to the study, our approach and aspects of uh, machine learning and AI, and how we can think about uh, AI and machine learning going ahead in rehab medicine. So um, uh, it's a I believe it, it will be of interest to, to quite a few at the meeting since AI is coming in so quickly now in healthcare and rehabilitation. So I hope there can be a, an also very uh, interesting discussion afterwards. Thank you, Doctor. Do you think this experience you had could be translated into uh, having better experiences in rehabilitation to patients with other kinds of needs? Yeah, so the reason why we started up in a, in a group uh, like uh, orthopedic uh, patients and knee arthroplasty <coughs> is that uh, the condition is uh, more defined and we, we decided to follow it uh, as a model uh, group and, and a model diagnosis that uh, slightly better uh, uh, to control the, par the collected parameters than uh, if we had started up with neurological conditions like like stroke, for instance. But uh, the principles that we now have developed uh, uh, is and will definitely be applicable uh, for other groups as well. And we are already on the way to, uh, to study other patient groups. Thank you, Doctor. Do you think there is a chance to use these kind of tools with uh, artificial intelligence uh, to facilitate access in low resource context to rehabilitation? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, the, the, the collected um, uh, data can uh, be applied um, in different ways. Um, normally, we have only limited time to understand, understand the full spectrum and again, the biopsychosocial spectrum when we uh, define the needs and try to understand the needs of each individual patient. Um, uh, we, we can apply it in, in machine learning algorithms and, and that can be done in um, computers, uh, with tablets, uh, in phones and uh, it can, can be executed manually as well. I think um, uh, when we talk about AI and we talk about machine learning, it, 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 in many ways the, the background is quite complicated, but in, uh, in practice and when you apply it in the clinic, uh, it, it is possible definitely to, to use it in, uh, in countries where uh, infrastructure is not so well developed. And, and I will touch upon those aspects as well when I give my lecture. How do you think that education for physical medicine and rehabilitation residents and fellows should change to facilitate the use of these technologies? Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> the education of uh, rehab physicians and rehab teams uh, out of necessity will uh, need to be upgraded uh, as a result of this rapid development. It needs to be embedded in the curriculum and uh, we also need to have a more uh, developed strategy on how to apply uh, these methods. Um, whether we like it or not, but I welcome it certainly because it will add uh, 
levels of, of quality to our patient interaction and the way we we examine and with the, the way we predict uh, both uh, intervention rehab programs and also outcome uh, it will be significant and uh, we can't just be bystanders in in our specialty we need to act actively try to understand and embrace and integrate this technology in our specialty. Could you extend us an invitation to join you at the next Congress? Yes, of, of course. Uh, I, I would like to uh, extend my warmest uh, invitation to, uh, to come and both listen to uh, <clears throat> my presentation and to come up and discuss uh, this subject and other things. Uh, at the next conference in Sydney and, and I welcome you all. It will be absolutely fabulous opportunity to meet up in Sydney. Thank you, Doctor. It has been a great pleasure to interview you today. Have a nice day. Thank you very much. Looking forward to see you too. Bye bye bye. <laughs>